Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to show you how to make flight plans for Microsoft Flight Simulator 10 and Flight Simulator 2004 using a great little program called Flight Sim Commander. So strap in, turn on the autopilot, and welcome aboard. Hey everybody, Michael here with the Sky's the Limit Aviation Channel. Today's video is going to involve making simple flight plans using a program called Flight Sim Commander for use in Flight Simulator X and Flight Simulator 2004. So let's go ahead and get the program up and running. It Once Flight Sim Commander has completely loaded, the first dialog box we get is the one for airport selection. Since we're going to be flying out of Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International, KATL, we're going to go ahead and double click on that and bring up the map. Now that the program is fully loaded and we have it in full screen mode, as you can see, there really isn't anything to see. On the left hand side of the program you get this little pop-up menu that appears and you can toggle different visualizations within the program itself. Let's go ahead and show you the visualizations that are available within Flight Sim Commander. Starting with the top left button, AP, that is airports. Toggling this button brings up all of the airports in Flight Simulator 2004 and FSX. VOR is your VORs. NDB is your NDBs. We're going to skip down here to frequency. Toggling the frequency button will pull up all of the frequencies and display them on the VORs and the non-directional beacons. Going back up to the top, we have ILS. This will visualize all of the ILS approaches that are at every airport within the simulator. We're going to untoggle these buttons for right now so I can show you some of the other features that are available. Starting with INT or intersections. These are all the intersections within Flight Simulator. FIX is all of the GPS fixes. We're going to go ahead and untoggle GPS fixes and intersections for the next button, which is UWP. This is for user-defined waypoints. And as you can see, when I toggle this, there's nothing to see because these are points that you define yourself in the flight plan. Let's go ahead and untoggle user waypoints for the next two buttons. These are going to be your high altitude airways, which are commercial jet airliners, ION, and your low altitude airways, which you normally fly when you're flying a VFR flight. We're going to untoggle the airways buttons for the next couple buttons and retoggle our airport button and we have ICAO which is the identifier code for the airport within flight simulator toggling that brings up all of your three and four letter identifiers for the airports name to the name of the actual airport we can't see it on 150 nautical mile zoom so we're going to have to go in and as you can see it's pop up next to the identifiers we're going to go ahead and untoggle the airport visualization button here and we're going to re-engage VOR and non-directional beacons and as you can see along with the visualization of waypoint itself with the ICAO and the name it gives you the three letter identifier for those fixes. The next button is FREQ or frequency. Toggling this brings up the frequencies for your NDBs and your VORs and also if you have the airports utilized along with the ILS's if you scroll in close enough you'll be able to see the ILS frequencies for all of the runways. 
Let's go ahead and untoggle frequency name and ICAO for the next button, and that's going to be CTRZ, and that is Control Zone. Pressing that will bring up all of the control zones around all of the airports. Next two buttons down below Control Zone are Airspace 1 and Airspace 2. Those denote the CTA and FIR airspaces, which are in the flight simulator world. They don't really visualize in this program, so I'm not going to toggle them, but this is just informational only. The next button we're going to look at is MSA, or Minimum Safe Altitude. Toggling that up, brings up little altitude numbers. These denote the minimum safe altitude to avoid obstacles when you're flying. So, for example, the North Georgia Mountains and the Smoky Mountains are up in this region, hence the higher minimum safe altitude. Around the Atlanta Airport region, 4,600 feet is the minimum safe altitude to avoid some of the taller buildings that are in the metropolitan Atlanta area. For, for the next button, we're going to untoggle MSA, and we're going to go ahead and scroll the map out to 700 nautical miles, and we're going to hit the map button. Map button actually shows the outline of the country, in this case the United States, also shows the borders of all the states, also shows you the major rivers and waterways. While we're scrolled out, you can also visualize the different air traffic control centers. So for example, this area right in here is Atlanta Center. This area up here would be Washington Center. This area in here, for instance, is Jacksonville Center. Go a little further south and you've got Miami Center right here in this region. We're going to go ahead and recenter the map over Atlanta and scroll back in. And the very last button that I'm going to show you is the AI button. Now, for those of you who fly using the VATSIM network, toggling AI traffic will show you any traffic that is flying on the flight sim network that is within 50 nautical miles of your aircraft. Okay, I've gone ahead and reset the map and I have my own user-defined buttons toggled here, basically airport, VOR, NDB, ILS, intersections, fixes, the control zones, and the map. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a basic flight plan. And today we're going to just do a flight plan from Atlanta to Los Angeles. So we're going to scroll up here to the very top under flight plan, click it, hit new. It'll bring up this dialog box here at the top. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to type in the four letter identifier, which is your departure airport and the four letter identifier for the arrival airport, enter or OK. It'll populate this box here. And as you can see, it creates a flight path from Atlanta all the way out to Los Angeles. Clicking on either of the airports within the flight plan box will center the map above that airport. We're going to go ahead and scroll back in now. Now that we have our departure and arrival airport set in the flight plan, we're going to go ahead and choose a standard instrument departure because we want to fly this as realistically as possible and this is what they do in real life. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead to the top menu, click on SID star and transition, hover over the SID, hit select. It'll pull up this dialog box for you. And what you're going to do, assuming, for instance, we're going to depart on runway nine left. So here's all of your departures for runway nine left at Hartsfield. And what you can do is you can click on each of those and they will highlight that specific departure route and you want to find a route that takes you out and away from the airport and then heads out west. So if you do not have access to online Jepson charts, you can just simply click on each of these. It'll visualize each departure route and just pick the one that looks best for you. 
Looks like it's going to be the Nassau 2 departure with the Chook transition. We're going to go ahead and add that to the flight plan. And it visualizes that. And then we're going to click on High Altitude Flight Plan. And there you go. Here's our flight plan. Atlanta to Los Angeles via the Nassau 2 departure. Chook transition. And here's all your different waypoints and jet airways that are going to be in this flight plan terminating in Los Angeles. And that's basically how you create a flight plan for FSX and Flight Sim 2004. Now, as far as the arrival goes, because of weather, etc., you might not know what runway you're going to be on by the time you fly four hours from Atlanta to Los Angeles. So you can choose just to let the air traffic control vector you in for the runway. Or if you're not flying with any air traffic, you can program your own arrival in and you do it. You program the arrival basically the same way that you do a departure. You just choose what runway you want to land on at Los Angeles and then just highlight, let it choose the one that best fits your profile. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and let air traffic control vector us into Los Angeles. So in order to save and export the flight plan, we're going to go ahead and click on flight plan, click save as, and in flight sim commander, when you first set it up, you'll tell it where your flight simulator 1004 or FSX orders are. So it knows to put the flight plan in there. And I just save mine in this format right here. Click Save. You'll get this dialog box. Saving flight plan includes SID stars and transitions for PMDG aircraft. And important, if you are using any of the aircraft, you have to answer no. We're just flying in a stock Boeing 737. So we just click Yes. And that will save our flight plan into Flight Simulator. And now all we have to do is pull up Flight Simulator 2004 FSX and we'll load our flight plan. Okay, I've got FSX opened here. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-position my aircraft into Atlanta and then I will show you how to load the flight plan into the GPS. So we're gonna go ahead and choose my aircraft. And I like to fly the Delta Airlines 737-800 in SkyTeam livery. And we're going to change our airport to Hartsfield. I'm going to pick a random gate here. Let's choose... Yeah, let's go with Delta 10. And let's go ahead and change the time let's say the local time is going to be 12 noon and we'll click ok we'll click fly now and we'll see you in the simulator okay and here we are loaded up and on the ramp in atlanta at gate delta 10 let's go ahead and get inside the cockpit and we'll go ahead and pull up that flight plan and show it to you on the GPS. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the flight tab. We're going to go to flight planner. We're going to come down here, hit load. And we're going to scroll through our flight plans and find the one that we just programmed here. K-A-T-L to K-L-A-X. And it pre-puts everything in here. Click OK. We do not want the flight simulator to move us to the runway, but we do want to stay at the airport. So just click no. And you turn on your GPS and here's your route. First waypoint grits and the rest of the flight plan. And you can click on this and here's the entire flight plan. from start to finish. And this includes all of the waypoints on the jetways automatically programmed in.
and that's all there is to it. Just get your air traffic control clearances, get to the runway, take off, turn on your autopilot, and then hit your GPS, and you're good to go. And that's going to conclude our video for today. If you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please make a comment, and please subscribe to my channel. That gives me the incentive to produce more flight sim videos for you in the future, as well as other videos involving the aviation world. Please take care. Have a great evening. Bye-bye now.